Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., the great, the extraordinary American civil rights champion once wrote, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. And the challenge of implementing devolution is great, but it's also critical. As you move forward into the third year of devolved government in Kenya, there will be many challenges and no lack of controversy and debate. As Kenya faces its challenges in the years ahead, challenges on security, on economic development, on corruption, on governance, on implementing the Constitution, on combating violent extremism, the county governments will be essential. They must be involved. And if they are, they can and will help solve the problems and build the future that the Kenyans themselves have asked for and have voted for when they voted for the Constitution in 2010. So as I conclude, I want to stress that the United States and all of the development partners are committed to enhancing and deepening the relationship that we have with the Council of Governors and all of the counties. We will continue to work closely with you, with the national government, with civil society, with the private sector, with everyone, to support the successful implementation of devolution in Kenya. We'll work with you to meet Kenya's challenges. We will partner with you as we all seek a better and brighter future for Kenyans and for Americans. Pomoja, Tisonge, Mbele, Asenteni Sana. Distinguished guests, good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be here to represent a group of close to 30 large corporate grant-making foundations in Kenya. On behalf of those foundations, I would like to congratulate the new chairman and the new vice chair, and also to thank the outgoing chairman. I want to take this opportunity, having served uh, for one year under His Excellency Isaac Ruto, to first of all congratulate him for a job well done. Under his uh, leadership, a lot of achievements have been noted and a lot of challenges were able to be resolved during his time. Therefore, as the outgoing chair, I want to take this opportunity because I've worked very closely with him to say congratulations and to say that because he's still Governor Bomet, he's still with us and I'm sure his guidance will still be available at the Council of Governors. Secondly, I want to congratulate my brother his Excellency Peter Munya for being elected the chair of the Council of Governors. And therefore, between the outgoing chair, the incoming chair, Governor Mvuria is the bridge for institutional memory. I welcome the new chairperson, Governor Munya, who has been also working with us very closely at the Council of Governors. He has been heading the legal committee and has been quite constant in all our meetings. My vice chairman, who is continuing as the vice chair, Governor Mvuria, has been a very, very dependable deputy and he has also been a very dependable diplomat amongst us. You've done a very good job, and whenever they, it was necessary to explain in a language Kenyans understand much better, he's always handy. He's uh, very fluent in all those languages, and he has actually been very, very, very helpful. I want also to welcome the whip of the Council of Governors and all the chairpersons of all the 18 committees. They have done very well. I now wish to welcome the new chairman to take over the tasks at hand, and in turn also he will welcome our chief guest. Asante Nisana, and I wish you all the best.
want to begin by thanking the council for the decision to elect me as their chairman for the next one year. I accept with humility the confidence that the council has demonstrated in giving me this great responsibility. It is indeed a privilege, an honor, and a great responsibility to take on this job and I will do it with everything I have to the best of my ability for the cause of devolution, the council, and my country. This position to me is a call to serve and not to be served. I am a strong believer in servant leadership and I will indeed live up to this. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to pay particular tribute to His Excellency Isaac Ruto my very able predecessor, who has laid the foundation for a strong council. I look forward to working with him closely in continuing to champion the cause of devolution and ensure the non-partisan message continues. The strength of the council has been the ability we have as governors to unite around our commonalities and leave our political differences at home. That I stand here today to take over the mantle of leadership for a council that has such a strong foundation is indeed due to his visionary and energetic leadership over the past two years. My biggest challenge now is to carry on his work of building and strengthening the council and ensuring that the 47 voices continue to talk as one. Distinguished <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, this is my sincere belief that for Africa in general and Kenya specifically to grow, we must understand the context of development in so far as the needs of the grassroots citizen is concerned. What this means, therefore, is that everything that we do or intend to do must be dependent on how well our people appreciate it. Today, two years later, after we assumed office under the new dispensation, we are reminded that the initial road to devolution has been hard, devolved governance in the Nancet and novel stage will not achieve milestones easily. We must believe in it to deliver it. I am taking over at a time when the council is faced with challenges on resources and transferred functions and challenges relating to law and policy. I want to reaffirm my commitment to ensuring that these are concluded, these are duly concluded. I am also coming into office at a time when the working relationship between the national and the county governments is warm. That's why you can see many a lot of representation from the national government in this luncheon. I want to affirm my commitment to ensuring that this relationship grows. In other words, the outgoing chairman has already symbolically handed over to me the unfinished business that we must continue with at this juncture in our history, that of, that of making sure that our constitution is fully, fully implemented and entrenched in law so that nobody in future will ever play any games with it that, like it has happened in the past. You know, we have walked a very long journey in arriving where we are today. The passing of the new constitution was a major milestone. But that journey did not end there. 
the new constitution requires shepherding by the institutions that have been given responsibilities in the constitution to make sure that it's properly anchored. Uh, one of that institution is the Council of Governors. Sometimes people do not know that. The Council of Governors has that responsibility on guarding the legality of the new constitution. The constitutional and the statutory structures are in place and the political leaders should invest in the consolidation of this culture of, of dialogue. I also want to say that devolution, and I'm here singing just the praises of devolution um, as dictated by the constitution and uh, the people and uh, something I believe in. Devolution is a crucible of public participation. At county level, public participation is critical. Unlike senators and MPs, and um, I think I've already said this, the governors, county executives, and MCS can run, but they cannot hide. They are accessible to citizens as a grassroots, and that enables people to have a voice that can be listened to. The burning political question in our country today is how to make devolution work effectively. First, there is need to be, needs, needs to be elite recognition of the political necessity and the imperative of making devolution successful. It is the embodiment of hope for the future. All political forces at the national and county levels must make devolution work, even if, even if only for the selfish survival as the political elite. They will only do so if they are loyal to their respective oaths of office and implement the constitution. Second, strengthening the institutions of dialogue, collaboration, consultation, and dispute settlement, such as the summit and the council of governors. I think those two institutions are so uh, critical and uh, they should be uh, strengthened. Consultation and cooperation will enable the two levels of government to ensure harmonization and coordination in the performance of, of functions. I thank you very much and I wish you well and long live devolution.